so, so, so sometimes you got to let the haters know where you stand. What you want to say. If you can't help me, please don't stop me.
Ghost in your love and commitment to Jesus Christ is manifest in here and it shows that a lot of us have nothing to offer God outside of this church. Because if we had a real intimate relationship with God, no matter what was going on in our lives, when we heard the word, when we heard the song of God, something was stirred up in us. If you can sit in God's house like Alice in Wonderland or Pee Wee Herman and not be moved, roll your eyes, suck your teeth, bat your eyes, fold your arm, cross your leg, and all of that, guess what? When we have the altar call, please run up here and throw yourself at the altar. Because hell will be your home for eternity if you don't know Jesus. Now I'm being serious, and I ain't fussing. This is a segue, right? I wasn't going to say that, but I'm not going to segue. See, we always expect good things from God. We always believe that if it's not good, if it's not what we want, if it's not the, the way we want it, then it's not good. We think that God is only working in our good. But God wouldn't be a good God if he just worked for our good. That's why our kids is crazy today because we do everything for their good. And what's really good for them is a good old fashioned. That's right. And people think I'm crazy with us. I'm, I'm just as serious as a heart attack. Some of y'all kids, if y'all had to live with me, y'all would run away from home. <laughs> I would wake up whipping you. <laughs> At lunchtime, part of your lunch was a would be a whipping. <laughs> Instead of saying your prayer for dinner to be a whipping. <laughs> and, and guess what? In the spirit, that's what a lot of us do. says 
one day is going to be a great preacher one day. Or a great basketball player. Or whatever God has. But RJ doesn't know it right now. He might have aspirations to be. So what RJ's mind says and what the devil says is just like he told Jesus or tried to get Jesus when he, uh, when he, when he uh, attempted it. Is he's trying to say, RJ, you can do what you want and you can be what I want you to be when you get old enough. That's what the devil says. Right? God says, yeah, you can be what you want to be. But in order to be that, you're going to have to go through everything it takes to become that. See, the devil told Jesus, this is what the devil told Jesus. He said, Jesus, the Bible said, he took him up on a high pinnacle. He said, Jesus, look at all the kingdoms of the world. He said, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give them to you. Now, watch this now, Alicia, watch this. The devil knew Jesus before they turned any past. The devil knew exactly who Jesus was. The devil knew that Jesus would one day have all the kingdoms of the world because they belong to him. What the devil was saying to Jesus, Jesus, if you bow down and worship me now, I'll give it to God and you won't have to go to the cross. You won't have to go through nothing you have you want to go through. If you bow down, you can have it the easy way out, Jesus. But Jesus knew that the devil was a liar. Our problem is we believe the devil when he tells us we can have the easy way out. Don't go through nothing. And then when we go through, we say, God, the, God, the devil, oh, the devil right mouth. That ain't got time for half of us. <laughs> can, can I be real? The devil's only concerned about them ones that could, could bring problems to his kingdom. Amen. And half of us, who's that? <laughs> you ain't making a difference in nobody's life. You ain't making a difference in your life. You just exist and they think the devil ride your back. He ain't got time to ride your back. He got bigger fish to fry. Amen. Amen. That's why, that's why when he told the sons of Sceva, they say, in the name of Paul's God, Jesus, I adjure you to come out. The devil said, well, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but who are you? I don't even know you. Look at all focus on you. No, he don't. In our text today, we find the Apostle Paul. Paul is writing about himself. And the thing that I love about the Bible is this. See, we come to church and we get saved and we get holy, unholy and sanctimonious and all that. That tells me you don't read the Bible. Because Paul is talking about himself. Read what Paul said. Now this Paul is saying, this Paul knows Jesus, this Paul is working toward heaven, and Paul is saying, listen, listen, I know a man. Talking about himself. He said, I don't know whether it was in the flesh. I don't know if I was in the spirit. But this man was taken up to the third heaven. Now, 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 there's three heavens. Hear me now. The first heaven is when you go outside and look up in the sky, right? That's heaven number one. All right, all the young people say heaven number one. Heaven number one. That's when you look up in the sky. Y'all ain't young, but y'all all right. I'll let y'all get a pass. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Y'all can be young for the day because the young people ain't saying nothing. See, that's why they act like they're young, because y'all won't say nothing. Y'all need to start saying something for us old people and act like we old. Y'all be young. Yeah. Anyway. Amen. Anyway, the, the first heaven. Now, the second heaven, you don't see. What happens, uh, Zion, in the second heaven, is that's where all angelic and demonic activity goes on. What am I saying? God is blessing you or sending blessings, and the demons are trying to intercept angels with your blessings. And there's a fight going on in the second heaven that if any of us witnessed it, your heart would stop. Okay. And, and I, I don't make up stuff, I'm telling you. Uh, that movie uh, um, is right on the tip of my tongue. The guy was a demon fighter. Constantine. 
If any of y'all seen Constantine, when Constantine was outside at night and they gave him that special match or whatever, and he lit the fire and demons were all over. Okay, I see. I taught my class in homiletics that you never make a theological statement unless you can back it up in the Bible. Amen. You know what I mean? So let me back it up to you. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel says, I, Daniel, took myself to prayer because there was a thing that I needed to answer. And he said, so it got so bad that I began to fast and I wouldn't eat or nothing because I needed the answer to this prayer. Right? And, and then the Bible says, and Daniel says, for 21 days. Who making all that noise back there? Is that there? What's going on back there? Uh-huh. Read that. We'll talk after church. I'm going to let you preach next Sunday, all right? Amen. Now watch this. Daniel said, for 21 days. Then the Bible read chapter 10, Daniel. I fasted and prayed. And then the angel of the Lord showed up. And this is what the angel said. Daniel, on the day that you thought to pray, before the prayer rolled off your lips, God dispatched me to answer. So what I want all of us to do 
foolish in your mind. You ain't got to call it out because I don't even know you're a thorn. But everybody got a thorn. What is it? A thorn is an itch you can't scratch. It's really something that you don't like about you, but you don't tell nobody. And can I tell you something? You don't like it about you, you won't tell nobody. But it's manifest you don't like it because anybody that got it, you don't like it. So when you see somebody that you don't like and you don't know why that you don't like them, but you don't like their ways or what they do, if you spot it, you got it. Right? He said a thorn. Oh, we got thorns. And you know what? I thank God for the thorns. You know why I thank God? Because I know me. If I didn't, if I didn't have no thorn, uh, we could already be arrogant. We could already be puffed up. Let us get 2,050 cent over somebody else. Yeah. When we get our income tax check, we change. Some of us pay that we change. So just imagine if you ain't have no thorn. See, that thorn humbles you. When you think you're better than somebody else, check your thorn out. When you start calling out somebody else's sin, check your thorn out. When you start judging somebody else for what they check your thorn out. Amen. That's his message. That's another one. Write that down. Remind me. That's going to be another sermon. Check that thorn out. I'm going to preach that when I get mad at y'all now, sir. Watch this. It was a messenger from Satan. But God allowed it. That's a shouting moment right there. Y'all been part this preaching long enough to know what a shout. Amen? Because even though you got a thorn, it can't happen unless God allows it. And if God allows it, then God can never put more on you than you can bear. So even though it's painful, even though you're going through, even though you don't understand, the hope of the matter is God will put more on you more than you can bear. And since you're still here with your thorn, that means you can bear the thorn even though the thorn is uncomfortable. Anybody ever get a splinter? Yes. Even though you can walk around with that splinter, right? Uh -huh. Even though you can bear that splinter, it's uncomfortable. Yep. And you know it's there. Okay. It don't even have to be hurt, but you know it's there. See that thorn? Paul said a thorn was given in my flesh. And he said, I went to God three times. Three times. Oh, God, remove this thorn. Now, if Paul, in my sanctified imagination, and not even my sanctified imagination, keeping it 1,000, I did not escalate it again, right? When I pray sometimes, I remind God how good I is. I know none of y'all don't do that. Because y'all don't do nothing. But if you do something, let me make a play. Lord, you know I pay my tithes. Amen. But a lot of y'all don't do this. You ain't got that prayer. You ain't got that prayer. Ain't got that prayer. Lord, you know I come to church. We can all say that. Lord, you know I sing on the choir. Lord, you know I sacrifice. Lord, you know I do this. Lord, you know I do that. And I don't understand uh, why. Why don't it happen to the person out there? Why don't it happen to the gang member? Why don't it happen to the drug dealer? Why don't it happen to somebody else? And three times. Three times. David, guess what God said? And oh. Capital. Y'all flip out when y'all parents say no. Amen. Isn't it a shame that we can't take no one? Oh, no, I don't just say kids. Nobody coming on us. Can I sing a solo? No. I'm finding me in another church. Who can't see? <laughs> we want to have a church. That's why we won't let you sing. Because we let you get up there and sing folk on ease downstairs while you sing it. <laughs> we come in the kitchen. They be cooking. Oh, we sneaking in the kitchen cooking. 
cooking and eating. I went in the kitchen and it may be some jokes, boy, they was having a dog. I'm gonna practice something in the kitchen. Now I was gonna put that in there. That's why I'm telling you, food going to send a lot of y'all to hell. <laughs> you don't believe me? Come around on food back then. Yes. Oh, yes. Facts. And then we overweight. I'm going to say facts because I'm overweight too. But please don't get offended if you're overweight. I'm overweight too. Why are we the ones that want to? You ever go to uh, 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 Golden Corral? Yeah. Who the ones? And I get like they crazy over oh, food. <laughs> Three times he said no, no, no. You got to learn to take no. In this life, young man, you're going to have to. My, my stepbrother, my dad had a, um, a young boy after he left my mother, stepbrother. Little Derek, he had a quad bike. He was young. And, and we used to be jealous. I used to be jealous. Amen? We used to be jealous because little Derek got everything he wanted. That little boy, and he never, my dad never said no, his mother never said no. He turned 18 years old, they bought him a car. He wanted one of them five, dollars sound systems. They couldn't get it for him. Guess what, because he wasn't used to sitting here and no, never done nothing in his life. Got with a boy, got the shotgun out of the house and went and robbed the gas station. First offense, five years he served in jail. Because he wasn't used to hearing no. Barbecues, the adults got to eat the ribs, the adults got the cheese. We couldn't even get a spare rib. You remember that, right? We got the ham, we was kids, right? We was fast. We got hamburgers and hot dog, and we was happy. Oh, I got a hamburger. I got a now the kids can learn before the dog. I don't want no hamburger. I don't want no hot dog. I want some of them ribs. No, you ain't big enough to have no ribs. You ain't got no job. Ribs cost money. No. interest in mind. He said, no, Paul said, and Paul said, and then my imagination said, I can't believe this guy. Put your feet down, Faith Jones. He said, I can't believe this guy. How can, I don't have any of y'all thought like this before. How can God be like this? Y'all can put your holy clothes off, your holy stuff down. How can God do me? Me? I'm not saying it doing you, bro, but me? Reverend? Doctor? Adolphus? Scott? Junior? Pastor of the Trinity? You hear me? How can he do me? This is what God said. God said, no, why? Why, why can God say no? Because my grace is enough. Sufficient. <laughs> y'all ain't get, y'all ain't get that. Eh? See, see, my grace is sufficient. See, see, see. Yeah. What we need to understand, and I'm, I'm not gonna hold y'all long here till then, is God is at His best when we're at our worst. Yeah. Like we need to understand that we are at our best when we're at our worst. Y'all don't because it don't make sense. It don't make sense. But, uh, we are at our best when we're at our worst. Amen. Uh, and see, that it takes more. It takes more to be good uh, when things are bad. Uh, it takes more to be to be still hold your own uh, when all hell is breaking loose. Uh, it takes more to have integrity uh, and pay your bills uh, when you don't have enough money to pay them. Uh, so you are at your best when things are at their worst. God was at his best when he told Paul no. See, Paul didn't know at the time, but he was at his best when God told him no. And I came, that's all I wanted y'all to know today. 
that there are going to be no's in your life. There are going to be times when your heart is broken. There are going to be times when you get sick and you don't know how to make ends meet. There are going to be times when it seems like your world all around you is crumbling and falling down. But I need somebody to know up in here today that at them times, if you're trusting God, even though the moment is at its worst, then you can be at your best. Well, I just want to tell you, so I had to figure this thing out, be nice. I had to find out when God was really at his best. I started out in Genesis 1 and 1, and the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I said that must have been when God was at his best. After all, when I explore all the wonders that God has made, I believe the songwriter put it like this, when I see the heavens, when I see the seas, and awesome wonder, my soul says how great thou art. God had to be at his best uh, when he created the Rocky Mountains. Uh, I used to live in Denver, Colorado. Uh, and when I got up in the morning uh, and looked out of my back window, uh, it was 90 degrees uh, in July. Uh, but the Rockies were still snow-capped. Uh, and it looked good. God had to be uh, at his best uh, when I went out to the ocean. Uh, and I was on the seashore. Uh, and I watched the waves come up to a certain point and go back. God had to be at his best uh, when he made man and woman. Uh, after all, uh, he didn't speak us into existence, uh, but he came down uh, and he made us in his own image, uh, blew his life, his breath into us, uh, and we became living souls. Uh, that had to be the best thing that God ever did. Uh, but I found out uh, that wasn't in her mind. Uh, so I said, let me run on down. Uh, God had to be uh, at his best uh, when the children
uh, one preacher said the angels are on the balcony, balcony of heaven, uh, just waiting for Jesus to say one word, come, and they would have destroyed the world. Uh, but he was at his best because uh, he had a job. Uh, so they took and they covered his face. Uh, they covered him up like this. Uh, and they said, you call yourself a prophet. Bam! And they punched him. Uh, and they said, who just hit you? And they spun him around again. Uh, and somebody else said, you said you're a prophet. And I mean, they wasn't tapping. They was punching him. Uh, but he never said a mumbling word. Uh, then after that, uh, they took him. Uh, they spit on him. Uh, they kicked him. Uh, they punched him. Uh, they dragged him from one place uh, to the other. Uh, they dragged him up around. Uh, but he was... Yeah. <laughs> he was at his best. Y'all getting this? Y'all getting this? He stood before Pontius Pilate. Come here, Pontius. Come here. I'm glad you got this water. Pontius Pilate said to him, he said, listen, Jesus. Look at each other. He said, don't you know I got the power right now to give you life or give you death. But when God is at his best, he said, guess what, Pilate? No man takes my life unless I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I can pick it back up again. He was at his best. Hold oh, your hands. Oh, Polly, both hands. Polly said, I'm going to wash my hands of this situation. And he went on to bed. Go to sleep. No, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Y'all get this? Amen. And Jesus, Polly said, Well, guess what? I'm going to take my time. He said, These people are crazy. He said, they don't even know what they're dealing with because Pilate's wife had a dream and said, have nothing to do with this. So Pilate tried to figure it out because he thought he was at his best. And he said, maybe if I whip him mercifully, then the people have pity. You know what you mean, son? You all right? You know what you mean? Straps. And at the end of the strap, they put bone and metal. And they would stand back. But when they did that, they didn't just go, they would jerk it, their wrists. And what would happen is the bone and the metal would dig into your skin and pull out your flesh. Thirty-nine straps. And when they thought they had it, he showed he was at his best. Because when they was tired of beating him, he rose back up. Watch this now. He was at his best when they took a crown of thorns and they pushed them down so much on his head that the thorns went inside his skin and 72 streams of blood ran down his face. He was at his best when they nailed him to the old rugged cross and he stayed there all night long. But he got up early and they buried him in a tomb and he got up early Sunday morning with all power in his hand. What I want us to know today, yeah, that God was at his best then, uh, and he's showing us uh, that whenever we're persecuted, uh, whenever things go wrong, uh, whenever life gives us sour lemons, or uh, when those us a curveball, you see that, thank you, young man, whenever the world seems uh, like they're all against you, uh, the Bible says this, uh, greater is he uh, that's in you uh, than he that's in the world. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I found out uh, that I can only be at my best uh, when the situation around me is at the worst. Uh, I can only show who I really am uh, when all hell is breaking loose. Uh, I thank God today uh, that when the enemy comes against me, uh, when folk talk about me, uh, when they scandalize my name, uh, when they call me everything but the Son of God, uh, I can lift up my head. Uh, Father forsake me. The Lord picks me up. God wants to 
Yeah. Don't you, Jay? Everything easy. That's right. That's natural. It's the opposite there, Ryan. And not me, because, you know, I'm saved and I'm a Christian. And I know the Lord, and, and I, know, I know how he is, and I just have to be like that. I don't care who you are. The flesh was the easy way out. But what happened? We didn't use that. Who? Come on. Come on, DeAndre, because you're cool. Y'all know DeAndre cool now?
for you to move the boulder. He said, I intended to make you stronger through the boulder. He said, look at your muscles. He said, look at the muscles you have gained from trying. See, see what am I saying? The opposition sometimes that say comes your way is not going to destroy you, but it's there to make you stronger. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. It's there to bring out the best in you. It's there to bring that you become better through the situation. Amen. Thank you, Father. Listen now. The last thing I want to tell you, God is at his best. Story. Come on, man, because you, you're looking at me like if he don't pick me, I, mean, I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing up here, but when I get home, I'm gonna share with my mom and them be like, I don't know why Pastor. And some of y'all, some of the people in here, I don't know why Pastor don't pick. He always picked the same people. He showed favoritism to them. Yeah, he, uh, somebody gonna go and say it, but oh well, so what? Amen. That's part of the job. All of y'all know the story. One day a man was thinking and looked back on his life. And as he looked back on his life, when times were good, he seen two footprints in the sand. When he was working and making good money, there were two footprints in the sand. When his marriage and his relationships were going good, there were two footprints in the sand. When his children were acting right and everything, his health was good, there were two footprints in the sand, but then he noticed that in the times that things weren't working out, in the times when all hell broke loose, in the times when he felt lonely and all alone, there was only one footprint in the sand. So he asked God, and let me share this, build me up. He asked God, and see, let me share this, stop acting like God don't already know what you're thinking about. Amen. Your kids ever lie to you and you know they're lying. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. That's how it is with God. Yes. Your heart is broke, you hurt, you go, whatever it is. He's going to be like, oh, Lord, you know, I just praise you. I love you. I'll, I'll be like, I want to praise you. Yes. And right now, I want to love you. Yes. See, I got help when God took my mother. Yes. And I was acting like I was all right. Yes. Right? At conference. I had the conference. I had to, I read. God dealt with me, but I had to be honest with God. I was pissed. I was pissed at God. And until I told God, I was pissed. I said, you mean to tell me that my mother ran up and down the highway, she devoted her life to you, and she did all that, and you were talking this soon? I got a problem with that. Like a lot of us do every Sunday. Yeah. You come here with your Kool-Aid smile on, acting like life is all good yeah. and everything is all right. But in, the, in reality, you are broken, you are hurting, you are afraid, you are scared, you are going through. And God says it's time that you be honest with me. I need words to come out. I need you to tell me you want to appreciate it.
and it's still not going to be the way you want it to be, and you might not get you might not get the answer that you want, but God said, I'm carrying you. See, I know if I was to put you down in that situation, you would lose your mind. If I would have put you down in that situation, you would have fell apart. If I would have put you down, you would have jumped off the bridge. So I carried you to the storms. I carried you to the rain. I carried you.
But I'm talking about you're empty on the inside. You're empty on the inside. There's no joy. Ah, uh, there's no joy. You can't sit here and I'm absolutely unequivocally say that you got joy. There's something missing in your life. God has said today I want to give you your joy. Because now that you admit that you're at your worst, I can be at my best. But you got to come. 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 God is saying you have to come. I want to carry you. I want to fix it. I want to work it out. But I can't work it out unless you come to me. You have to come and want to be set free. You have to come and want to be delivered. You have to come and want me to do this work. I will never do anything to you. Unless I can work it out. I'm just trying to squeeze something out of you. I want you to come so I can get it out of you. Oh yeah, you got something in you that I need to get out. And it's going to hurt. You're going to go through. You won't be comfortable. It's going to make you sad. It's going to make you depressed for a little while. But you got to come. Come to me. Oh yeah, labor are heavy laden. I'll give you rest, he says. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am me and lowly. My yoke is easy, he says. My yoke my burden is My burden, my burden, my burden. My burden is Oh, 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 God says right now, let me be at my best. You try to be at your best. He said, you try to be at your best. Uh, you've done everything you thought you could do. Uh, uh, and your best wasn't good enough. Uh, you cried, you cried, uh, and you prayed, uh, you prayed, uh, and you cried. Uh, you talked, uh, and you cried. Uh, you prayed, uh, and you cried. Uh, you dressed up, uh, you dressed down, uh, you gave, uh, you took. Uh, you did everything you could do, uh, and you still wasn't at your best. Uh, he said, but now let me have it. Uh, I'm going to be at my best. I'll pick you up. I'll turn you around. I'll heal you. I'll work it out. I'll strengthen you. I'm at my best. When you are weak, yeah, you are weak. Oh, give it to me. You got to give it to me. Oh, he said, if you would only give it to me. <laughs> if you would only give it to me. If you would only give it to me. Oh, I know your heart hurts. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. I know you're depressed. I know you're down. I know things aren't working out. But I need you to give it to me today. Because I want to do something in your life. I want to be strong today. I want to be the one that carries you today. I want to be the one that brings you through today. I am your shield and your buckler. I am a very present help in time of trouble. I am your mighty battle axe. I am your lily of the valley. I am your bridge over trouble water. I am your all in all. Just give it to me. I'll carry you. I'll work it out. I'll bring you through it. I know the storms are raging. I know the sea is building. I know all that is happening. But I am here. Because when you are weak, I'm at my best. When you are down, I'm at my best. I'm at my best. God down in the name of Jesus. Oh God, your people are here hurting. Oh God. Oh God. Oh. This whole troublesome world that we live in. Oh God. Oh. Oh God. It seems like we can't get anywhere. Then like the more we do, the worse it gets. It seems like when we came to you, God, that all hell broke loose, God. And the devil is telling me, God, I might as well go back out. Hey. Oh, I need you today like I never needed you before. I need you to purge me. The devil is trying to cause me, God, to stray from 